Have you gone through a spiritual awakening and you now feel lost, confused, lonely and unmotivated? Today I will share my story on how my spiritual awakening ruined my life, why it happens and three steps on how to get back that zest for life and be happier than you were even before your spiritual awakening. Before my spiritual awakening, I was super excited to go to uni, climb the corporate ladder. My dream was to get a job at Google. I had a decent amount of friends and I was very trusting of the government, the media and politicians as I believed they all had our best interest at heart. Now, when I was around 24 years old, that all started crumbling down as I had my spiritual awakening. Uh, and this can happen, you know, overnight or it can happen over a long time. For me, it was really three steps that happened in around two years. The first step is that I got the Google job that I always wanted. And I was, of course, super excited as I started out. But then I started to feel like Neo in the Matrix movies where yes, like the steak is really good, <laughs> but he feel like there's more to it and this is not fulfilling his soul. There was amazing food, parties, amazing benefits, and it felt great. And this job had a great reputation, so I felt good about myself, but it wasn't making my soul happy. I was feeling how I was feeding my energy to the most powerful corporation in the world, but I wasn't making any difference in the world. And I started wondering, wow, is this all there is to life? Have I really reached the ultimate goal? Because my soul wasn't happy. So I quit and I became a digital nomad. Step two of my spiritual awakening was when I quit that job, I went to Backpack South America and I attended an ayahuasca retreat. So I took this psychedelic and I had this profound experience that I could really, really feel that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. This is very temporary. You know, this body could, could die and decay any day. And same with my wealth, my friends, they could just all be gone in one second. So this is just a very tiny part of our experience as spiritual beings, as souls. So I was questioning like, why does society and school teach us to focus on just getting more and more and more? Achieve, achieve, achieve. And the final step of my spiritual awakening was reading the book Fingerprints by the Gods of Graham Hancock. And he was talking about how there are signs that these, these world wonders are older than you think. Many of these um, temples and pyramids all around the world, like for example, at the Sphinx of Giza. Experts have analyzed um, the base of it and they are certain that this pattern is flooding, which can't be true because it was a desert when the historian says that this Sphinx was built. So this suggests that it is thousands years older when there were still forests. So that made me think, what else are we not being told? And I noticed uh, the media censoring certain viewpoints. And even with the science, which I always believed, like, of course, science is the most trustworthy source. But then I saw, for example, with diet, that um, egg companies fund egg studies. So it's not really the most unbiased studies, most of them. Most studies are funded by companies who are biased. So of course that is going to sway the outcome. So all my old views and values were shattered at this point. My friends and family are like, what's going on with you? They got triggered by my new values and views. I get triggered by theirs. I lost almost all my friends. I couldn't stand a normal job. I was questioning everything society told me, even small things like it's okay to drink straight from the tap. And I even stopped wearing bras because, I mean, what's the point? What purpose does that actually serve? I stopped drinking alcohol, stopped eating meat, stopped wearing jeans. My old life was gone. I was lonely, frustrated, hopeless and confused. Now, everybody's spiritual awakening looks different. You might, for example, love your office jobs or you love your jeans or you love your alcohol. But for you, it might have been other triggers like social media that you had to quit all your social media or that you quit fast fashion and now you only buy ethically sourced clothes. So now that you've had your spiritual awakening, your life is ruined, 
what do you do? Do you go back to your old self, your old life? Well, I tried. After this South America trip, I did get a normal 9-to-5 office job again. I was miserable. I went on these friends um, apps um, to find new friends, normal friends. And I, I, I tried having surface level conversations, but like I couldn't. I'd rather be in nature or having a deep conversation with someone who also have had a spiritual awakening. The more I tried to go back to my old life, the more suffering I received. So I simply surrendered and listened to the signs from the universe, listened to my intuition. Why am I feeling? What feels good to me? And not what society thinks I should do. Not what my friends and family thinks I should do. What feels good to me? And a few years later, I thought that my transition was complete. It's all good. You know, I've, I'm just like a Pokemon. I've been upgraded to the highest level and there you will stay, but no. What I realized is that the transition never really stops. It keeps going. So even now that I've been an entrepreneur with my soul-led business, I have spiritual friends, um, a, a nice clean diet, uh, clothes I feel comfortable in, there are still things happening, still transitions. For example, I'm feeling the urge more now to cook from scratch instead of, instead of buying pre-packaged. I'm feeling the urge to make my own beauty products so they're 100% natural. I felt the urge to wear more flowy clothes like the dress I'm wearing now with more feminine colors rather than just like black, which I used to wear, which really helps me step more into my feminine energy, which I love. So now let's get into the five steps on how to get your happiness back uh, post spiritual awakening. So the first step we already talked about and that is we need to really surrender to the change because the more you resist the more suffering you will experience. Step two is to dare to say no. You will need more alone time the further along your spiritual awakening journey you go. So if a friend or a family member invites you somewhere and you don't feel like going you can say no and you can also be upfront with why. Like, it doesn't have to be awkward. If it is that you just want some more alone time, say that. Say, oh, I've had so much with work this week. I just feel like I need some more alone time this week. But I'd love to meet up next month or next week. This happened to me recently, actually. My friend wanted me to come over to her this week. But I'm doing a medical medium cleanse right now, so I'm feeling quite weak and I just want to relax and recharge at home. So I, I told her that and there was no hard feelings. Step three is to meditate daily, which I talk about loads on many more videos. And the reason why this is so important is because it will make you come more into your soul rather than your ego. And that will create so much less sufferings because your ego is not trying to like change the already set path that you set pre-birth. And meditating daily also helps you on your path towards enlightenment and helps you focus, gives you energy. I mean, it's just like this super pill. So I <laughs> highly recommend. Step four is to spend time in nature every single day if you can. The wilder the nature, the better. But if a park is all you have access to nearby, then just go to the park and try to drive out to a forest once a week or so. And make sure to really ground, be barefoot, because being in nature is how we recharge with life force. And I think kids know this better than adults. You see how excited they are splashing in water puddles, climbing trees. They love nature and they really see the benefit of nature. Step five is to find your purpose. That will make, make you feel less confused and lost in life and like you're actually contributing to society and making the world a better place. And I know most of you listening or watching this, you are old souls and your purpose is simply not to just uh, be, be here and experience Earth lives because you've had many lives here. And yes, that is part of life, but you also have a mission to help other people as well. So if you're not sure what your purpose is, then I have a free guide link in the description on how to find your purpose in five simple steps. Have you had a spiritual awakening and what triggered it? I'd love to hear in the comments. Love you so much and have a beautiful day.